All right, and we are back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. And for the fourth part of the show, we're going to talk about Hassan Reddick. You know, just some things that Robert Sala had to say on his status for week one. I did want to bring up one thing so uh, regarding uh, Deshaun Watson. So uh, the Browns restructured his contract, uh, which create which will which will create uh, thirty six million dollars in cap space. So uh, Cleveland converted forty four point seven nine million of Watson's forty six million for twenty twenty four space salary into a signing bonus. So uh, you know that's good for the Browns because that contract has been really bad so far, and they're really hoping for a big year out of Watson because. Like I said, that contract is has, has not panned out the way they've hoped. But I just wanted to bring that up. So now let's get back to Hassan Reddick. So he's still not with the team. Uh, their game is the following Monday, uh, September, uh, September 9th. So, um, you know, what, like, what's going on? Like, is, is he going to report? Is he going to play? What, what's going on? The, the, the way things are right now, it doesn't seem like that's the case. Now, Robert Sala seems optimistic that he is going to, uh, that, you know, there's still time for him to report. But, I I mean, it, it, right now it doesn't look like it. So, Robert Sala said... Now, this is on Tuesday about the possibility of him suiting up for week one. Salah said, yeah, I'm assuming, yeah, well, yeah, I'm assuming he's in phenomenal shape. He's a veteran. He knows what he needs to get ready. He's had success in multiple buildings and multiple schemes with multiple coaching staffs. So he's going to know what he needs to do to be ready for week one. So he still has plenty of time. Also, uh, Salah said, did it, it look good? I bet it looked good on, oh, yeah, because he was doing drills. It, in the article, he's doing drills with his personal coach. And Salah was, was commenting on that. And they asked if, you know, he spoke to Reddick recently. He said, no, I've just been focusing on the guys that have been here. Now, Salah says there's still time. Uh, it's not really that much time. Not plenty, really not plenty of time. The, the game is in less than two weeks. You know, th this guy's got to report. And he hasn't. And it's just, it's very odd. Like, I, I just, I don't think I've ever seen this before where a team trades for a player that, you know, is looking for a new contract. And that player ends up not reporting to that team. And is now holding out with, that, with this new team. And there's a possibility he doesn't play. And what will make it even more unique is if the Jets go, all right, well, this didn't work out, and they end up trading him to someone else. Make it someone else's problem. It's just very odd. The whole situation is very odd. You know, it, it's... And the Jets are getting blasted all over the place by this move. Because how is it you bring in somebody that's looking for a new contract without, you know giving him a new contract and now he's holding out I don't know I, again we're not going to know I, I don't know what the thought process was I mean a lot of people like the move I like the move as well they you know they that was a position of need because Bryce Huff left in free agency to go sign with the Eagles so the Jets needed someone to fill in that role and Hassan Reddick who's an older player but still productive the Jets bring him in, and he was looked to be that piece. And 
he hasn't shown up because of this contract. But again, it's just, it's another headline that makes the Jets look foolish. You know, and this is a big year for them. They got a lot of expectations. You're hoping that Rodgers plays more than four snaps in the regular season, which I think he will, but fingers crossed because, again, every time I, I – especially playing the 49ers week one, every time I, I, I'm going to see him drop back, I'm going to, like, look away. Because I, 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 you know, I don't want him to get hit and then get hurt. But it's just – this is just another distraction. You know, the, the, the Jets don't need this right now. And I feel like a lot of people say that exact phrase a lot between Aaron Rodgers and now this. The Jets don't need this. But it's just another thing on their plate that, you know, you got to see Robert Sala get up there and meet with the media and say, yeah, this is not a distraction. We're not worried about this. We're concerned about the guys in the building. What? Behind closed doors, this has really got to be eaten at them. Because it's like, can we just get to the season? Can we just not have something come up every two seconds? But that's not the case. You know, this is some, they're going to continue to deal with this stuff. And I don't know what the resolution is going to be. Is Son Reddick finally going to get that new deal and we're off and running? Or is this going to leak into the regular season? It seems like it's going to go into the regular season. And I understand players want to get paid. I get it. You know, get your money. But at the same time, you know, he's constantly getting fined because he hasn't shown up. So you're losing a lot of money. But, it, again, I, I bring this up. Le'Veon Bell held out for an entire season. And look what ended up happening to him. You know, he goes to the Jets, but he wasn't the same player. And he flamed out, and he was done. You know, 2019, yeah, like I said, played with the Jets. 2020 was with the Jets, then went to the Chiefs, but really was a non-factor on the Chiefs. Had a cup of coffee with the Ravens and the Buccaneers the following year, I believe, and then he was done. And Hassan Reddick is an older player. You know, like, if, what if you step out there like, yeah, he's still training, of course, you know, keeping himself in shape. But, you know, what if you go out there after missing all this time and you end up getting hurt? Now, if he gets that new contract, well, he's got that. But that's the, that's, you, you, you're risking a lot by holding out. Like, I get it. But at a certain point, you got to say, all right, I got to step out on the field. Because otherwise, I'm not going to get a new contract. You know, and especially because he's an older player. So it, it's, a, it's a strange situation. And again, the Jets are getting criticized up and down. For this move. I know when I was listening to sports talk radio here. There was a Jet fan that called into the Michael K show. And they said that Joe Joe Douglas is a top 5 GM. Um, I don't know what. Why he said that. I mean he, he believes it. But now. That's not to say that Joe Douglas is not. A good GM. Because he has, you know, look at the draft classes. But 
the Zach Wilson draft pick, you know, there were a lot of, he also had his misses. And the biggest miss, like I said, is Zach Wilson. So that alone, that decision right there to take Zach Wilson with the number two overall pick, that does not make you a top five GM. Again, I still, I mean, look, he drafted the offensive rookie of the year and the defensive rookie of the year in Sauce Gardner and Garrett Wilson. But the Zach Wilson, the Zach Wilson draft pick kind of balances everything out. That's just my opinion. Now, again, I don't think he's a bad GM. But, and I, I think had the Jets had the number one overall pick in 2021... They would have took Trevor Lawrence. And we, we probably don't even have this conversation. But they got put in a bad spot with that. So, and they really liked Zach Wilson. So. But, I yeah, I don't think he's a bad GM, but I don't think he's top five. Do not think he's top five. I mean, we'll see what happens this year. I mean, look, look, they traded for Aaron Rodgers, too. And, you know, if Rodgers doesn't get hurt, you know, I, I think Rodgers getting hurt also, you know. But but how are you, how are we going to predict that? We had no idea that was going to happen. So, we'll see what happens. But the, the, the Hassan Reddick stuff, uh, they, they got to hope that he reports and they eventually get something done here. Now, I, I think even if the Jets don't have him, I don't think it's, like, the end of the world for them because they still got a very good defense. But he helps this defense. He makes this defense better. And he was supposed to be the replacement for Bryce Huff. If he doesn't report, well, other guys got to step up. So, let me know what you guys think, though, about the Hassan Reddick stuff. Do you think he's going to end up playing in week one? Right now, it doesn't look like it, but we'll see. So when we come when we come back from our final break of the show, uh, I'll talk about the NFC East. I'll predict that division, uh, how that division is going to shape out. I'll give you the records that I have for the teams when we come back. So for one final time today, stick around, and we'll be right back here on the GSMC Football Podcast. 